Good afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you're at. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for Friday, June 10th of 2022. So, um, gosh, we'll jump into the heart space here this morning. Just closing your eyes if you wish, taking that deep breath in from the earth. Taking that deep breath in from creation. And just breathing in those energies of both earth and creation, allowing them to flow through you. All right. Well, good morning, everybody from Australia, Minnesota. Hey, Lee, good to see you here this morning while you're at work. <laughs> Yay. April from Albuquerque. So, um, again, welcome to 50 Questions Friday. If you are here live, please do drop your questions over on the questions, uh, the questions tab. Uh, and otherwise, if you're here, please do chat with everybody. We got some great people that are always here. Um, and if you are watching after the fact on YouTube, uh, if you would like to join us live, just sign up uh, for our newsletter at twistedsage.com. So let's see. Um, we will begin with uh, our questions from the internet first, and then we'll come over here and we will begin to check on questions here. So let's see, our first question. Our first question comes from Dorothy. Um, Dorothy says, I have the quantum heart pendant. I've worn it for several months, but I'm not feeling anything from it. I've done the breathing technique, but just don't feel any different. I take it off and no difference in energy. So the quantum heart coil pendant is really a subtle pendant it's not going to you know push you pull you drag you into the higher consciousness fields and the huge release work it's going to hold space and it is a gentle subtle space that it holds but it is still profound and it is still doing that soul level work i mean not only is it doing that soul level work like all the wisdom tools do um, the, the integrating, the harmonizing, the bringing more of your light in. Um, it's also still protecting that field from electromagnetic dense energies. Um, now, I'm not sure if you are energy sensitive. You know, a lot of us who are really sensitive to energies, of course, we can, you know, we'll feel that subtle difference, especially if we have it on, take it off, things like that. Um, if you are not sensitive to energies, um, you know, there, and if you do want to work with energies, there's a lot of other tools that are more potent. And in all actuality, it was the Hedica, the symbol of the Hedica water elemental that first broke me open to being able to feel energy. Um, you know, and then it just kept opening up. Um, but also another thought was with this quantum heart coil pendant, is that if you do not have a huge disparity in your in your energy so i mean if you are already sitting pretty decent um and you put on that pendant it's not like it's taking you way out of where you were so usually if you are you know if everything's really dense you're being affected you're unaligned um you know all energies are just affecting you and then you put the pendant on, then you really notice that difference in between where you were at and where it takes you to. Um, so what I can say is basically just to reassure you that the pendant is working, um, you know, and I do understand that you are totally trying because you're doing the meditations and such. Another thought is to sit with you, go into the heart space, go to your higher soul self, and just start expressing 
um, you know, that you want to be able to feel or feel the shifts or be able to tell when something is energetically working or not working for you. Um, you know, start to have those conversations with the soul. And because that steps you into choosing those, those possibilities and potentials. So, yep, step in, have the conversations, choose to do so. And yeah, and I, and I hope that, uh, yeah, I hope everything works for you that you can start to feel the energies. Um, so let's see, we'll go to our next question here from Anna. Oh, let's see. Question is, I bought two personal water ring sets last December. I noticed now there is a water alchemy ring in the place of the divine I am. Can you elaborate on this ring and tell me if it's best to update the set by buying that ring? So what we did was we took the, the, um, the harmonic creation field trio water set, this small personal set, and the the ring in question is the center ring which is the divine i am now the divine i am ring that we are now using in this set it is still a divine i am but we put that new energy in here so we call it the water alchemy ring you can use just a single ring um but it is that new new energy that we're working with but it also works with that set so you can still use it with the harmonizer the chalice and the alchemist the alchemy ring now you do not have to go out and buy a new alchemy ring to replace your divine i am ring simply when you are using either one the alchemy ring or the divine i am ring in the trio set this is still going to bring through the same energetics as the single alchemy ring. Um, and, and this is bringing through more layered. So, I mean, working with the water, I would still suggest using that trio of rings. So, um, so right now, Anna, the, the trio of rings that you have of this alchemist rings, still perfect. Um, I would not, I would not suggest having to update your center ring when you're using them all three together. Now, if you were using a single, still a phenomenal ring, the updated version just has a little bit more energetics in it. Um, so yeah, no reason to update it. I would just stick with it and use all three at the same time. So, all right, let's see. So that is all of our questions for on um, online email. So we'll jump here to questions. Um, let's see, let's see, we got one here uh, from Ted. What cubit measure do you use for your tensor coils, the golden fire coil? Uh, so the measurement for the golden fire is, it is a measurement that we discovered. So it is a proprietary measurement, the golden fire is. It is one that I have shared with some tool makers in the world who are able to bring that energetic through. So the golden fire energies are so much different than what the Slim Sperling energies were when he was creating the 144, the 177 megahertz. They were a static frequency within a ring. Over the years of working with Slim and others and ourselves, um, we, we, we came up with like the, the golden fire ring. That one was an energetic that was given to us. So the rings anymore, like the golden fire ring, it is a specific measurement. Yes, it is a very specific measurement, cubit measure, but it is also the energetic template that is true truly where the power and potency of the tools that we create comes from. It's not necessarily that cubit measure. That is simply the space holder. What is in the space is the true magic. What is in the space is all those higher dimensional tools, the etheric templates, all of that which we create, which we bring into the space holder. 
And then your soul is the one who determines what comes through your higher consciousness, however you see and say that. You are the one who determines what comes through for the energetics in these rings because they contain so many frequencies. Within the ring, you contain, it contains the frequencies, properties, consciousness of all the plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms of the planet, all the different rays of light. So many different energetic potentials and possibilities exist within the rings. That has to do with the etheric templates. So as far as um, the, 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 the tensor coils that we make, um, yep, those are made with our with our golden fire, the etheric templates, as well as the cubit majors. We don't actually use any of the 144, 177, or 188 um, cubit measures anymore. They just don't really hold these higher fields. Um, the second part of the question is, can I use Slim's AccuVac coils with his 144, 177, and 188 rings to help with rain? So this is in reference to a, um, to a rain-making plate. It was what, um, what I posted on social media. It was something that Slim brought to us years ago that uses a trio of rings. And so, yes, you can totally use this trio of rings that Slim has, the 144, 177, 188 megahertz, as long as it is a trio of functioning tensor rings. And then what Slim had us do was he had us put four coils. And then in the center, a clear quartz crystal sphere. So, yes, you can totally do that with any of, uh, with any of the coils, any of the rings. Because Slim was showing us in the very beginning of using those older measurements, those older frequencies, putting, the, putting them together in that, um, that arrangement. And it was, rain was one of the side effects from this tool, as well as clearing of GMOs, not only in the environment, but for people themselves. And we have actually taken the energetics of that tool, and we have put that into the templates of all the tools that we create. Um, let's see, going back through here and saying hello to everybody. Thank you all for being here today. Um, here's a question. Uh, Scott, can I put the silver pocket alchemy rings into the water like the silver golden fire? Now, yes, you can. And we did... I kind of went on a, a long discussion on that one last week, but basically the silver pocket alchemy rings are, um, they're sterling silver, which is still mostly silver. There is only a small percentage of copper. So even though we suggest to put in pure silver into the drinking water and not have any copper in your water, Sterling silver is still just fine because it has only a trace amount of copper. And as we know, the Arabetics use copper in their drinking water for thousands of years. The only reason that we suggest not to put copper into the water is that unless you are muscle testing, asking your body daily if it is okay to drink this copper water or not. Um, if you are muscle testing, asking your body then yeah go for it put copper in your water but if you are not um if you're not confident in your muscle testing asking your body skills i would suggest not putting copper directly into the water um, sterling silver i still feel is going to be just fine because it'll only leach very very trace amounts of copper so yes you can put your silver um sterling silver rings in the water we've just usually suggested not to but um really uh, i mean if you were drinking that water every day for your entire life then you might want to check muscle test for copper but i i think you'll be just fine scott um carla what would you recommend for a child who is having nightmares, some nights keeping him from sleeping? 
may also have entities passing through his room. I have a pyramid grid in the corner of his room. Can that be influencing his sleep? So, no, it does not seem like that uh, pyramid grid point is, is hurting his sleep. It almost does feel like there's still something going on there. Um, I would suggest it, what I, what I would suggest doing is, is either going to the wings of talk product page, going through the meditation, anchoring that wings of talk and that column of light into that space. You can simply purchase the wings of talk too, if you wish, and set the wings of talk in that space. And that will clear what all that is. Um, again, so you can either purchase the tool or you can do the meditation, bringing that energetic into the space, or you can do both. But I feel that is, is going to be the solution there. Um, the quantum grid points can can do really well for a lot of things, but sometimes when there are um, deeper deeper reasons and connections for those energies being there, the wings of talk is one that can go in and help to release all of that deeper intertwinings so that it can be released. Um, so yeah, Carla, that that's sure what I would suggest. All right, I can jump over here to questions. Linda, uh, which generator would be best to broadcast whole tones music out of? So gosh, and I guess it depends on the purpose for the broadcasting of the music, but um Gosh, I was just kind of feeling into that because at first I thought, you know, maybe the Divine I Am generator. I am almost, gosh, I wish we still made a 333 megahertz generator because that would be a good one. I am almost feeling that the, um, the Harmony generator, actually, what I would do is go to the tensor field generator um, bracelets and I would get one of the new energy bracelets um, because that's going to contain the 333 that contains everything um, but yeah that's what I would do is I would get one of the the new energy ones um, that should be the absolute best for broadcasting sound no matter the purpose um, because that is that will cover all all intents that you would be broadcasting sound for. So yeah, I would say the, um, and that would be the most economical too, I believe. Um, so yeah, the, the generator tensor field generator bracelets, and, and that can be either size, the large or the small. And again, in that new energy would be the way to go. I would suggest. Um, Marsha, can I use my wisdom generator bracelet to charge small crystals? Oh, most definitely. So the, the wisdom generator generator bracelets, um, this wisdom field is amazing with crystals. So it, it was that you could take a regular tensor ring, any tensor ring will clean and clear a crystal. It'll bring a spin rate up, but the newer energies, especially the wisdom, holy smokes, the wisdom is basically bringing the highest aspect of the consciousness of this crystal into the crystal. This is a beautiful piece of rose quartz here from our wonderful state of South Dakota. So now then when you put this piece of rose, Jesus, who I think it's your guys's attention. Holy crap onto this. So, Ooh, that is pretty potent. Yeah, I feel it's the, the potency that I'm feeling is your all of your attention onto this wonderful piece of rose quartz and how it's broadcasting. And I think it's all of you that I'm feeling, but it's an amazing broadcaster. Um, um, because 
not only is it broadcasting the frequencies and properties of this crystal, the consciousness of it, but it is bringing in more of what this rose quartz was before it came to the planet. It is bringing more of it here, just like it does with water, just like it does with the human plants. Same with crystals. Um, so yeah, not only is that going to charge that, bring in more of its consciousness, but you can broadcast it right now, which I'm going to leave this set up here and broadcast for us. Well, let's see, Diane, do you have a specific rain-making plate? I know you had a prototype rain-making plate with four coils. I live in two states that have critically low amounts of rain. <sighs> if it isn't necessary to have a plate, what is the intention? You know, and the reason I sighed here, Diane, is because that's been something that I've been... Mm, going around with myself about is that I know that we have the ability to work with weather. You know, I've seen a 12 year old girl move clouds and that was kind of 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Um, and I know that weather patterns are a reflection of consciousness. Consciousness controls weather. So the rainmaking plate is a great way to broadcast and amplify those intentions, that consciousness to work with the land. Um, usually I would suggest like a seven inch harmony generator to set in your space, put your intentions into it. It has a 12 mile sphere of influence. This Rainmaker plate, it may be one that um, we had it on our prototype page and, and I would like to continue to make these um, because truly it, it was more for working with GMOs, um, not only GMO crops in your environment, but GMO food that you bring into your home, as well as any effects of GMOs that you have on your body. So that is really the true um, intention with that plate um but do keep an eye on our prototype page because we may just we'll probably continue to make those plates um and basically when you get them you can either use a tensor field generator or a crystal clear quartz sphere as your programmer and you set that in the center of the plate you program your intentions you set it on the earth itself and you just let it be I know this is the greenest we've had it here in South Dakota in this area. I mean, it's still been raining almost like every day. It's It's been nice and beautiful. So I'm very thankful for the rain. And who knows? I do have a rainmaking plate out there. And finally this year I put in my intentions. I was like, you know what? I am creator too. I, I'm going to totally put my intentions into making it rain if that's in the highest and best. Um, but yeah, as far as setting an intention to make rain, um, then that's a tough one too. I do have a friend, uh, Dwayne Gardner who wrote the new science of rain and he did studies in Austin, Texas using tensor field generators and frequencies and everything else. And he was showing that he was changing weather patterns in Austin, Texas. Um, so yeah, you might find some inspiration there. The new science of rain by Dwayne Gardner. Um, Alfredo, does the first wisdom generator first does the first wisdom generator roll out contain the new energy? So, gosh, yes. The thing with this new energy is is that we are still bringing it in. Now, the the wisdom generators that we that we very first made and put out, they do contain this new energy um but we are still working on it so everything in the new energy we are still working on the alchemist taurus is not quite right yet but it will be um so if you own one don't fret because you will notice when it shifts just like all the tools in this new energy, they're phenomenal. We have great testimonials. We're seeing, feeling, doing wonderful things. 
but there's still more to be brought in. I still feel like when we anchor this new Taurus in fully, that 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 alchemist Taurus, um, you're going to know it and you're going to feel it. Um, I know that that one is going to be intense and it's just going to strip away things. Um, it's going to be amazing. But the new energies are not fully in yet but they're still phenomenal your wisdom generator does have the new energies and it will continually be upgraded so all things that are in the new energy will continue to be upgraded um so watch here i'm guessing that by august holy smokes we will have this energy fully anch anchored in and realized and it's going to be amazing and it's going to keep growing it's going to keep expanding um so yeah hold on to your wisdom generator alfredo because we we're going to keep we're going to keep upping the potentials to these new tools hey renard Let's see, I recently used the silver halo with this sacred plant ceremony and it took me somewhere that I've never been. It was a home I existed in at some time and space. Have you had any experiences or received any feedback that is similar? Oh, so yeah, I tell you, so um, these wisdom halos, um, the halos, are in this new energy. Everything that is in this new energy is connecting us to all that we are as creators, as we exist throughout creation. The whole intent and idea is to connect with you as creator everywhere and align all of that into the here now. Integrate it with the soul. That's that's where we're going as humanity. And that's what we're doing with the tools, the new tools, is we're in bringing in more of what we are, harmonizing, integrating, having it become a part of us in the here and now. But Renard, totally what I see is, is that instead of you bringing in that lifetime, you went to that lifetime and as as i was just reading this i was seeing that and that's what i see too is that oftentimes when we have these soul aspects that are coming into our awareness that we are going to begin to integrate in to our whole and completeness we may have more of our attention there into that space and so that's been one of those things where we've been working at the integration of soul aspects more because sometimes we'll have a soul aspect that's very strong and it influences us influences us in the here now a lot but we want to bring everything into the here now and integrate it harmonize it that's you know that's what the soul wants to do that's where we're in alignment with so that is something else that we're going to be doing with these newer tools is we're going to as as we bring in more of the potentials and possibilities into this new energy that is one of the things that we want to see is that integration of more of those soul aspects those parts of us that exist as a soul somewhere in creation so yeah that's pretty fantastic that you found that and and that um Basically, if you find that soul aspect again, Renard, ask it to come in. Um, you know, just open yourself up. You are that zero point light and you're just asking it to step in and bring in all of its wisdom and light and consciousness into this creation. Um, so if you run into it again, ask it to step in with you. What can we use the Merkaba card for that is in the orders? Oh, hi, Linda. Yes, so the Merkaba card. Um, let's see. I just wanted to read for myself. This is the Merkaba card. Under the resources page, you'll find many simple, easy, powerful, free meditations, activations, and attunements. So this Merkaba card is just simply to bring your awareness to the Merkaba. This tells a little bit about it. It shows the photo 
for a lot of people when they see the the see the information where they're reading it or the visual they have an instant merkaba reactivation the merkaba field is something that um gosh i've, I've been teaching this for oh, darn near 10 years hey, 10 years uh the merkaba activation and it really shifts people i mean i've seen people do complete turnarounds in their entire life um you know a lot of people they start to see auras um they bring more of their gifts online it just it brings in a higher connection clears their field i mean it does so much so the merkaba card that we include that we be sure to include in every order is simply there for inspiration for you to hopefully find and resonate with and if you don't that's perfectly fine too we just want to offer as many tools as possible and these tools are the innate consciousness tools because the merkaba is an innate part of the human so we're not doing anything bringing in anything that hasn't been here we are simply working with what is here that has not been activated or realized. Um, so I, I really suggest taking a moment and, um, you know, maybe doing one of the meditations of reactivating the Merkaba field because um, it in itself is an electromagnetic field that can protect you from electromagnetics. The Merkaba field also um, holds and amplifies your intentions. So during the videos, um, we hold space for you to put in your intentions into those Merkaba fields. Thank you, Linda, for asking that, though, for sure. Um, let's see, another question here. I just heard of an infinity coil based on the free energy Tesla work, was working with. Has anyone used your tools to produce electricity? So the theory is... A tensor ring, well, so this is not a theory. A tensor ring is a room temperature superconductor. It creates a feel, uh, creates a flow of energy that is infinite. So how to translate this tensor field into electromagnetics to be used for electricity? The theory is, is, is that if you have electrical current in a wire, you have a wire here, you have a tensor ring, you get your wire to oscillate at the same frequency as the ring, you put amp into it, and then it begins to draw current. That is the theory. There is so much free energy out there, you guys. There's free energy devices everywhere. I went to Tesla Tech, spoke a few years, went there a few times. People have been afraid. For many years, people were getting killed by our government for free energy devices. Well, our government, corporations, whatever, whatever. Those who stood to lose power, control, and money. Free energy is out there. Um... I have a lot of friends who make free energy devices, to tell you the truth, and they work. Tensor rings, I feel, could be another solution. Um, and so, anyway, we will see. Um, it's an amazing time to be here, though, you guys. All the chaos is just beautiful because that's what allows new, wonderful things to come into being, is when all the old things are no longer serving us. Uh, Diane, if you broadcast rose quartz and the whole region has rose quartz, like the Black Hills region, will the regional rose will the regional rose quartz pick up on the broadcasting? Who okay, yep. So that's an interesting concept, Diane, uh, that Diane was talking about. So if I were broadcasting this rose quartz, then so does all the other rose quartz that is within this sphere of influence then does that start to vibrate differently as well kind of like where you have two tuning forks and that tuning fork makes the other tuning fork vibrate it's quantum entanglement as well who so yes i totally feel that diane that and maybe it's just because we're we're look because i'm looking at it and seeing it and 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 witnessing 
that happening. But yeah, no, I am. I do see that this is affecting not only rose quartz, but most of the minerals around. But you know, a lot of that has to do with these new fields. Holy smokes, because they connect the consciousness to the physical. I mean, that's in a nutshell what it's doing. Um, April, can we do a meditation healing with the new energy? Um, gosh, we did some kind of a meditation. I know here, gosh, I don't even know when that one was that we did a meditation where we were working with that, um, that star, um, and no, I, I am sorry. I won't do a meditation today other than our sacred space, the heart, um, still kind of figuring out this new energy and, and how to use it. I guess last week we kind of did this too, because last week, you know, and somebody called me out on it too. They said, Hey, that's benching. Um, because what we did last week or not last week, but the last 50 questions Friday, two weeks ago here, um, in, in May was that, um, we basically, we did connect with that, this new energy. We did connect with it and we just held space for it. And we just held space for it to radiate out into the world wherever it needed to go without us directing or limiting or having limited intentions of outcomes, things like that. Um, so yes, please do check two weeks ago, um, our last 50 questions Friday, we did that meditation. And if you go to YouTube, Amber has all of that time stamped so you can find the meditation there. And it really, to me, that was a beautiful meditation because that's, it's the new paradigm of being versus trying to step in and be creator from the human perspective. We open and allow our true higher potential as creator to come through and come through in creation instead of that limiting human. So that's definitely the new paradigm. But yes, thank you, April, for, for asking about the, the meditation, but please do check out the last, last times. Uh, Linda, can the infinite halo amplify the use of PEMF tools? Yes, yeah, so all PEMF tools, they're, they're a pulse electromagnetic field. So basically, any of the tensor tools you can either use with your PEMF device, you can have it on your person, so then your field is harmonizing any of those and amplifying. Um, so basically, with, with any kind of electromagnetic therapy, frequencies, light, sound, doesn't matter. When you use the tensor tools with it, it can allow, um, it can harmonize those fields for your body to better uptake, for things to just work better. Um, so yeah, using your PEMF, and if you have a certain time that you use that PEMF with, um, it's going to reduce the time that you need to use that device. Um, so that's the way it is with almost all radionics, broadcasting, frequency, light, sound, whatever, using tensor fields is, is that if you had a certain time that you needed to do it, it lessens your time greatly. So just be aware of that too. Um, all right. So aloha from Hawaii. Yay. Yep, Organite Austin. So that's who we were talking about with uh, the new science of rain is Organite Austin and Dwin Gardner. Um, and Scott, I ordered the silver halo and the copper halo. Would it be best to wear the silver at night since it's more subtle? <laughs> you know, I think that's, yeah, to me, that would be a, a good idea for myself um, to wear the silver one at night where it's more subtle. But if you can still sleep with the copper one, then geez, I do them both. <laughs> you know, um, if you can still sleep with it, just because, um, you know, there, I still don't quite, 
quite see and understand, but they're working just a slightly bit differently. They're working like in different levels. They're doing the same thing, holding the same field, but it's like they're working on a little bit of a different level than each other. Um, so I think using them both together would be fantastic. But um, however you can sleep. Let's see, we got another question here. Oh, let's see. Marsha, can I use the wisdom wand to clear a pond that is covered with algae? Or is there another wand that would be more effective? Can I also use the wisdom wand on high tension lines? So, yes, what I would do with the wisdom wand um, for clearing a pond is, well, let's see, and for the, the, the high tension lines. So for your power lines and for your pond, one aspect of the wand, the wisdom wand, is the golden fire and light energetics, the golden fire and light wand. I would do a light anchor. So there is that, I think, gosh, I'm trying to remember where that video tutorial is. I think it's on the wisdom wand page. But you can anchor the columns of light. And I would anchor a column of light into the pond and into one of the towers. Um, because as a column of light, if it's anchored into one of the towers that carry your high your high tension wires, as the as the electrical wires go through there, they go through that column of light, and it follows that whole electrical distribution system front ways and back ways. And then for the pond as well, you're just bringing more of that light in. Now then, with the pond, I would also take your wisdom wand, and wand it, run energy into it. And when you're running energy into it, you're running light into it. And again, do it from the heart. Don't do it to try to get rid of that dang algae and things like that. You are just simply bringing your light, your divine awareness to that water and allowing whatever is in that highest, most beautiful perspective to come through. And that highest, most beautiful perspective is you, and you are dang powerful. So if you can just step aside and allow for whatever comes through to come through. So, yep, that's what I would do is I would run energy into the pond as well. Okay, so that brings us to um, another thing which I forgot to mention, which is we started a new thing called Tool of the Week, which comes out on Monday. And we do our highest percent off, which is 16%. On some of these tools, it's going to be close to being, you know, yeah, that's that's a pretty deep discount. Um, this week through today is the Golden Fire and Light Wand is our tool of the week. Phenomenal, phenomenal tool. I just found out here the other day that we have literally made and sold thousands of these in the past four years that we've been making them mostly the mini wand they are a uh, you, the wisdom wand contains the energetics of these so i carry my wisdom wand all the time i still carry one of these eh, i have one on my necklace right now this never left my side for the four years that it was in creation. Amazing, amazing tool. Um, the wisdom wand, to me, it, the wisdom wand does way more than this. But if you want to get in and just do what this tool does without, you know, the dragon wand, the fairy wand, all the others that come with the wisdom, then you totally step into these. Um, they're pretty simple simple wand to use these are the ones that i traveled all over the world and taught people how to anchor columns of light attuning to and active and and receiving the activation with and using these wands so you attune to the higher dimensional form of this tool and the activation is that sacred heart activation then when you go through both of those then you anchor those columns of light you can use it to run energy you can use it to close portal vortexes clear waywards entities it is an amazing tool and the energetics of this is very much in 
It's in a lot of the tools that we create. It is in the wings of talk. The golden fire and light wand are actually the poles for our pyramids, our golden fire and light wands. Um, where else are we using them? Obviously the dowsing rods. So anyway, um, tool of the week. And next week we will have uh, tool of the week coming out on Monday. And so we'll have that sale going on all week. So look for that coming out on your email on Monday. So yeah, be sure to sign up for newsletters if you haven't. Um, and well, gosh, I think that is all I have for today. Uh, I see we're done with questions. I thank you all for being here. And, and I appreciate you guys being here through the journey. Um, you know, I, we, we have such an eclectic a group of people here. A lot of people here are just here for EMFs. A lot of us are here for that, you know, that expansion, um, that higher connectivity. Some of us are here for water and some of us just are like, what the heck am I doing here? <laughs> you know, and so welcome and thank you for being here. And, um, and please do take what resonates. So take care, everybody. I hope Hope you enjoy this week. It is beautiful out. Um, check out our last 50 question Friday meditation. It can change your life by just shifting that entire perspective. And then everything becomes a lot more peaceful when you know that you're not out there trying to control creation because creation can't be controlled by you. So when you surrender and allow, creation comes in a much different way, as does your perspective of it. So I hope that you all find that peace. All right. Much love.